Welcome back to a new tutorial on how to throw the javelin. Today I'm going to share with you five of my all-time favorites in the gym. It's explosive exercises, they're going to help you with the javelin. There's some basic ones, there's some for more advanced. We're going to have a lot of fun together. All right, now it's time to really look at the exercises and just a small hint, today's episode is sponsored by Adidas and Zalando. So thanks to them, we're here back at How to Throw the Javelin on my YouTube channel. The first exercise that I want to share with you is a simple one. It's the narrow high pull. So we have a narrow grip and we pull the bar really, really close to our body, um, up to our chest and even up to our chin. The weight is some round average, so nothing super heavy, but it's also not too light. We're always planning to have around 8 to 12 um, repetitions in the exercise. The high pull helps us to warm up. It's an exercise that we use in the early preparation season with high numbers, so 12 to even up to 20 repetitions, 5 rounds, and we also use it for warm-up purposes in the actual weights training session. So it's always good exercise to get your back and also the whole core stability really warm and active. Executing the exercise, just make sure to stay nice and upright, be a little in the knee, knees or shoulder broad apart or even a little bit broader. So we have a nice and firm step, very strong grounding. So we work from the ground up, pull, the bar straight up and always please stay close to your body the whole time you pull up. Javelin throwing and yeah, conditioning training, strength training, there's always much about philosophy, but there's one thing that we're all sure about, we need explosive strength. Of course, we have to build the max strength first because the higher it is, the higher the explosiveness can go, but we are very certain that it is a good idea that from the beginner and also to the more advanced athlete, it makes sense to always involve explosive whole body motions with a lot of length of pull because that describes the javelin at its best. The next one we're talking about is the speed snatch. A speed snatch is just a simple snatch but with a little more length of pull and it is also with more intention. There's more speed at the bar and we need a little bit better body control. So first of all, and there's a lot of information on the internet, go and look how to learn a proper snatch, and then it's time to go into the speed snatching. The speed snatch itself, grab the bar, not as broad as you would grip it for your normal snatch. Go grab it a little bit more narrow. You see this here beautifully. And then again, accelerate close to your body. The butt stays deep at the beginning and then really pushes up together with your hips. There's a lot of yeah, energy coming from the ground and the whole exercise builds up as a very fluent motion. So there's nothing that should go um, in steps. It's all very fluent and explosive up to the end. And if you see that small jump at the end of the um, snatch, that's not a problem. It's just because we accelerate it so much. Just make sure you don't drop the bar too early, otherwise we get the risk of injury. So always look for a controlled motion and then enjoy the exercise. We have to talk about the numbers. The speed snatch is something we really use um, as a detail in training. Usually it's the one following a strength session or snatching or something. So we use it around three rounds up to five rounds um, and five repetitions is definitely enough. If you feel like you can't do any faster, then it's time to stop and rest. Next one on the list is the standing pullover. Talking about javelin, it's usually people talking about pullovers. We truly believe they're a little bit overrated, but it is something we also have to prepare, especially as beginners. It is also a good exercise to really learn directioning, to learn how to accelerate in a straight pattern. All right, so we're in the standing position. We have a little bit of kind of a block leg. We have kind of a support leg, so make sure it's the sides you actually use in throwing. And then bar overhead, we grab very narrow. Um, so it's shoulder broad or even a little bit more narrow. And then 
yeah, hands facing towards the camera. This is the grip we're looking for. Stay nice and upright. Great upper body control, that's very important. And no big arching in the back. So we want to have a strict and proper position and then it's time to work. Really come from the stretching, stretched position and really work your way um, through into throwing direction. Just go for it. It's again a preparation exercise. In preparation season, we go from eight repetitions up to even 20. Really depends on the weight that you want to carry. And if we come closer to season, you would expect more weight. No, at the standing ones, we actually go on speed. So we're not working on more weight with the standing pullovers. It's something we can do in the laying version, going higher, yeah, higher weights. In this one, it's all about speed. It's all about explosiveness. So we stay nice and upright and really accelerate through. Working on speed, it's three repetitions up to five and this for three to five rounds. Next one is called, and it's a German name, the Hampelmann. We use this one again as a whole body acceleration drill. It has a very, yes, yeah, spicy, snappy ending. We push from the ground up. There's not a lot of knee angle, and it's one we can use in circles. We use it for CrossFit sessions, but we can also use it as a single one after a normal weightlifting session, just to speed things up again. The Hampelmann, you will feel that at first, is much about rhythm and coordination, to really coordinate the push-up, the push, and also to coordinate the leg work, the little small lunges that we're doing. These need to be on point, they need to be controlled and precise. For the exercise, usually we're going for 10 repetitions, up to 20 when we go into a circle, and you can also play the whole game up to 30 seconds or something like that. And the last one of my five gym all-time favorites that I'm sharing with you in this episode is the core twist. The core twist, we're standing a little bit more than shoulder broad. It's very much important that we find the good rhythm to really accelerate and decelerate. And so we really pull the brakes. When we come out of the swing, we're starting from the right leg together, give it a good push, the bar starts to swing, and then it's about us to really finding the moment to push from the left side again to accelerate in the other direction. There's a lot of eccentric um, parts in this one, so it is intense. Eccentric work, you all should know that, is yeah the highest intensity that we can put on our muscles and the whole system. So make sure to really learn this exercise a bit by bit. No overdoing at first place. First of all, grab a wooden bar, learn the motion and learn to accelerate. Um, stay nice and upright, always head control, eye control, and then it's time to increase weight. First of all, go with the bar and then go up to, yeah, these days I'm training with 60 kilos, for example, but also coming closer to season, I will get back to 40 kilos to really spice the whole thing up, to have more speed, more explosivity, on our obliques, because this is what we're training with this, ec this exercise, the rhythm, the separation, and much about the core obliques. It's a great exercise I'm using usually twice a week, three to four sets, and then kind of 10 swings. It's not much too much about the number in this one. Five to eight is a good number. I wish you all the best with this exercise. Enjoy it, but first of all, be careful and learn how to execute it. And then it's time to put on the weight and it's time to put on the work. So this was our episode about five gym favorites. There's definitely more to come. Javelin training is super diverse. We have a lot of exercises to choose from, but these five, there's nothing that can go wrong with them. I had a good time using them for all of my career. So now it's time to practice. And again, let's all together thank Adidas and Zalando for supporting this episode. Have a good time. See you next time, Thomas.